Welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tip. So today we're going to move on with our chassis build with our JK C43 alias chassis. Now if you joined me last time in my video you would have seen that I was working on the centre section getting that nice and flat and straight and we finished with the pillar blocks in the upright position. So today it's time to move on to the pan section. So I put the pans together with the centre section, just drop them on. They just fall on without the J-bars in place. They should just sit over the top. And the first thing I like to start with is this bar that goes across and getting that to sit right. And then we move on to each pan individually. So I don't know, it's a bit weird, but I don't know whether you can see on here, there is a little mark on this bend here. And when I compared it to my previous chassis before, you can see there isn't a little mark on that one. So maybe it's something to do with the pressing, maybe the way it's been stored, I don't know. But there is a little extra mark here on this side. Now, what I do in order to check this bar is correct, or what I do to set this bar in the first place, is I hold down these two long bits that come out of the pans there. So I hold those down over the top of the center section, sort of about there-ish. And then I take a feeler gauge and I run a feeler gauge underneath that part. So that feeler gauge is too big. So I run a feeler gauge under there, under both parts to see how level it is. Obviously you can eye it up as well from the side, but what I'd want to start with is when this part here and this part here are on the block, that this bar here across sits the same height, both sides across the center. So again, I hold it down, run my feeler gauges underneath, and then with feeler gauges, even if it doesn't fit, you get the closest one, you can see that maybe one side might fit better than the other. Now I've done a little bit of work on this before the video. I got carried away in between the last one and this one and wanted to carry on. So I've actually sorted this bar already. But the key to sorting it is to take a pair of pliers, and if you take your pliers and you put them across that join like that and you squeeze your pliers you'll flatten out that part there so clearly the side that's higher you want to flatten out and then when you've flattened it out it will obviously bend your pan so it comes up at an angle and then all you need to do is take your flat pliers put them across here and then you can bend again with just with your fingers you can bend it across like this and flatten it out so after a bit of bending i've now got this central bar to sit nicely where i want it now i tend to at this stage i tend to set the pans up just so that this point and this point here are actually the lowest parts when you put it onto a block so the pans will sl very slightly rock around these two points. It just makes it easier to set this bar up. So I put that onto there. And then I very only, I only lightly need to just hold down on that. And then this is a two foul feeler. And then I can run that underneath and that passes underneath okay with the same, oops, with the same level of resistance on both sides. So actually that's quite easily sliding through but the next level up my fourth owl doesn't slide through so let's just check that no that that won't go so it's somewhere between two thou and three thou clearance on that bar across the center now obviously as you lower that bar it will make the pans ever so slightly wider at the back but not by very much and why do we go to all the effort of lowering this bar well, it probably, again, doesn't make much difference exactly how high it is over the chassis. It's nice for it to be equal either side, but anything, as, everything as low down as you possibly can in the chassis just helps lower the centre of gravity a bit. So I don't like seeing a massive gap here. Also, the larger the gap here, the more chance there is of the inside of the pans falling down below the centre section and catching on the track in extreme cornering situations. 
So again, if this bar here across the centre can't drop too much, then it will stop these bits here from catching on your track. So after the centre bar is sorted, notice I've moved my block, because this time I'm only going to be using the edge of the block, and I'm going to do one pan at a time and get make sure it's nice and flat. So I can obviously turn that round and do that. Now, this is the one point, or these are the two points on the pans that I've now got correct to sit, which is that point and that point. So if I hold that on the block there, I can then see how does the rest of the pan, move my hands out of the way, make it easier to see, how does the rest of the pan sit in regards to this one piece that's running across here? Well, I don't know whether you can hear in the video, but there's a gap under there. There's no gap under there. Get to here. You can see it moving there. You can see the reflection changing. So there's a gap under this part of the pan here. That bit's hard down on the block, but that's moving. Again, a fraction moving there, but this is hard on the block and it's just twisting here. So again, if you get your head down to block level, you can actually have a look across. It's quite common for these inside parts here to be lower than this part here. Yeah, that's quite common on pans. So I'm going to start working using the same techniques as I used on the centre section. Probably on the pans, it's mostly with my fingers and hands, again, using the edge of the block to bend it in certain places uh, to get it nice and flat. So when you're doing most of your bending, Remember, it's this part here that you don't really want to bend. So that's why the flat pliers are very useful, because they sort of hold that part of the pans in place and stop you from accidentally bending that part. So I tend to hold it mostly by that when I'm either bending this bit up or down or twisting the pans slightly, like so. So twisting the pans slightly like that. And then it makes sure that this bit, my reference part, is still the same. So I've done a bit of work on this right pan now. So that when I put it onto the edge of the block like that, and I press, you shouldn't see too much moving. There's no dinging as it hits the as it hits the block. There's no gaps underneath. So I'm reasonably happy. It's not a bad first attempt at that pan. So I'll then move on to the other pan and get that relatively flat. Then again, I'll come back to the other pan and see if I can get the whole chassis or the whole pan section to actually sit flat on the block, both pans together. All right, so I've gone over the other pan and actually after flattening that pan and that pan, the whole pan system sits pretty level and pretty flat on the block. Some key things I found were obviously some bends across here so what I found was that the pan was bent down, so it sort of went in that direction, like that, with a bend sort of about here, and again, at where that front pin tube mount is on the outside. That was the case on both sets of pans. Sometimes, again, across these joins here, or not joins, but, but pressings across here, the pan is slightly twisted. So again, twisting it one way or twisting it the other way to get the back of the pan to sit nice and flat, as well as this front part of the pan to sit nice and flat. Um, again, you wanna be careful so that these two bits here that you've got flat to start with when it's sat on the block, you don't want these two bits to be uh, holding the pan up in the air, or again, you don't want these two bits to then be sticking up in the air. So again, it's a case of twisting it slightly. When that pan is flat, when this pan is flat, it's a case of taking it in your hands and twisting it one way or the other like that, but just across that bar in the middle to get the pans to sit flat. A good way to check is to hold one corner down and again tap all over your chassis. Can you hear it tapping or tinking against the block? All the way around, not there, hold it again in the other corner, do the same, hold it in the front corner, do the same in the other front corner, and make sure that nothing lifts up. Again, hold it in the middle, make sure nothing lifts up you know, around the pans, and then you know it's pretty flat. 
One good little tip for when you're flattening the pans is these two bits here, these inside bits that come out here to the front J bar. Sometimes it's, it's a good idea to just bend them up and out of the way, just so that they are slightly clear of the block. And then it gives you a chance to get all of this part flat and all of this part flat without these two bits interfering. And then once you've got the whole bit, bit, bit flat, you can just very carefully just bend them down slightly till they just touch the block. The other thing you can find on these chassis as well is that again, these two inner parts are slightly twisted. So that's quite easy to fix because you get your flat pliers, put them on the end. You can then have another pair of pliers or even with your hands, you can hold it like that and then you can twist it one way or other to get those two front bits to sit level and flat on your block. Remember exactly like the center section, some key points. This part and this part, because this is where the rear J bar is gonna go across, they need to be hard on your block and nice and flat. Generally the back of the pans, having those nice and flat helps so you haven't got like it's up on the inside edge or up on the outside edge. Again, this crossbar here that we started with, that's your reference point, making sure that sits on the block nicely. The two front J bar mounts, again, making sure they are nice and flat on the block. And again, these front corners just there and there, making sure they're not up in the air on your block. And you can generally eye it down the two sides and make sure that the pans aren't bowed in any way. So when your pans are flat, you can now slot them back together with your centre section and see how they sit on the centre section. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to try and even out the amount of sideways movement I've got at the back and the front. So sometimes you can have quite a lot of sideways at the front and not much at the back. And again, or vice versa, where it's quite tight at the front and loose at the back. An easy way to solve that, just to start with, is to take your pans and then you can flex them one way or the other on a flat block and just bend them like that or like that to close up the back or open up the front until they're even. But when you've done that, make sure they still sit nice and flat on the block and that nothing else has twisted. So let's put them together. You can see I've got pretty much the same space, front and rear, same sideways movement. Now people are saying, well, you haven't done anything with these uprights yet. Well, no, you're correct, I haven't. They're mostly in the upright position this one on the pan here is slightly angled. I must say, you know, these ones at the front aren't actually not too bad. You can sort of straighten them up, but I wouldn't spend too long on them until you've actually put the J-bars in, and then you're seeing exactly where the J-bars are gonna sit and how much movement there is in those hinges. So I tend to leave them until that stage. When you're happy with the side-to-side -side movement of your pans, one of the last things we look at on the pans before we look at fitting the J-bars, are these little front pan stops here and here. Now, this is a matter of opinion really and how you like your car set up, but they're actually pressed so that there's a gap between the pan and the front T-bar. So when you press on your pan, you can see they lift up. Now, that tends to be quite a good idea to help the chassis run a little bit more smoothly it tends to go over bumpy tracks quite well. It tends to be a bit more forgiving if you haven't got the rest of your chassis set up very well. Um, I tend to like these front pan stops to rest actually on the T-bar. Now, some people like the ability to tweak the setup and therefore what they do is they put some Lexan or some tape to pack out the, the gap between the T-bar and the pan. And then you can obviously put different levels of tape, different thicknesses of tape to adjust that setup there. But I tend in here to just bend this little ear down here until it touches that T-bar and flatten it all out nicely. So I don't know whether you can see if I turn that sideways there. There we go. Hopefully I can focus that in. There we go. So you can see that this part here is bent down so it touches the T-bar. If I turn it round that side, you could probably see that if I line up the, the bottom of the pans, there is a gap between that pan stop and the T-bar. So I tend to bend them down so that, say the pan, the bottom of the pan is level with the bottom of the T-bar. And then the way to tell if you've got it right is to sit it onto a block 
and if you press on those front parts there you can see the pans don't lift but if i press on there you can see they're lifting up at the back obviously you also want to check that you don't bend it down too far there's a gap under the front of your pan so i'm going to carry on and do the other side so the way i flatten those out is i take my large pair of pliers and i put it across that bend just so that this part of the plier here sits on the bottom of the bend the other jaw of the plier sits on the top of the bend and then i squeeze the pliers to flatten that out like so notice now it's sticking up at a bit of an angle i might need to squeeze that a little bit more but i do it a little bit at a time because i don't want to overdo it and then i will straighten it out by holding that part of the pan in my parallel pliers like that nice and tight and take that little ear there and then I can just bend it so that it sits parallel again with the bottom of the pan and then I'll test that out on the chassis and if I need to squeeze it some more I'll squeeze it some more and do the same process again and again. Now that we're on to the stage of where two bits of the chassis actually come together and touch it is worth considering any burrs on the chassis now the chassis are stamped in that the base of the chassis they're stamped in this direction here so that you've got a slightly curved edge here where the stamp has come down and then you've got you might have some burrs on the top of the chassis same thing applies to the pans again they're stamped from the bottom so that when the tool cuts through it might leave a burr on the on the back face so clearly when you're putting your pans together you might end up with a burr on this t-bar at the front now some rules allow you to slightly radius the edges uh, to remove any burrs whereas other other rules don't allow you to grind anything off the chassis at all or even sand the chassis or use wet and dry or anything on the chassis if that's the case then you can probably just get away with just trimming the chassis, just taking a knife and just scraping any burrs that you can find off the edges, just on the bits where they come together. So both sides there of the T-bar. Be careful not to mark the chassis in any other way, but as you can tell already, there are always odd marks on the chassis, even when you get them out of the packet that are different from other chassis. So make sure any burrs are removed and then you can bend these front ears as i said and then press down on them and see if there's any movement on the pans and there's nothing on these there's no gap underneath the fronts either again when you've done these it's worth checking that do all the pans and the center section still sit flat and straight the other way you can check is to put the guide tab just over the edge of the block with a t-bar sitting on the block like that you can hold the front of the pans and you can lift the guide tab like that and see if there's any movement under those two front ears and say if you've got them nicely positioned there shouldn't be any movement but as i say you can over bend these and you could probably even find that then the fronts of the pans are actually in the air but i've had cars where i've had some accidents and bent all the front of the pans and i'm still lapping at a pretty much the same lap time at the end of the race as i was at the start so sometimes i think why do i bother but i do find that in testing this works for me so that concludes the second part of our how you build a JK C43 alias chassis. So the next Cleave Tech Tech tip video coming very soon is going to be fitting the J bars to the chassis. Now there's lots more to come because we're building the whole chassis up from scratch. So we've got to look at also fitting pin tubes. We've got to look at getting the guide set right. We've got to look at fitting the oil lights. We've got to fit, look at fitting any bracing, fitting the motor, getting the gearing right. So there's plenty more to come. So if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and then you won't miss any of this exciting, epic adventure of building your chassis.